Hi, I'm Selva Prabhakaran. In this one, let's understand the box cox transformation very clearly. Very often used technique in machine learning. What it does is, say you have a random variable. Any given random variable, it need not follow a normal distribution. Now, if you want that variable to follow a normal distribution, you apply the box cox transformation and the resulting variable will follow a normal distribution. This will typically work perfectly well if you have a variable that follows a Pareto distribution. All right. It need not always be the case. But perf works perfectly well if you have a Pareto distribution, say, imagine you have a variable, say, imagine you have the marks of students or some, some variable that occurs in the real life. Now, if you apply the box box transformation, the resulting variable, let's call it Y, resulting variable will tend to follow a normal distribution. So how does that happen? Let's imagine you have this variable X and various values in X are X1, X2, X3, so on and so forth till Xn. So you have this technically for box box transformation to work perfectly well, this X needs to follow a Pareto distribution. But in practice, even if X is not Pareto distributed, it will fairly work well. All right. So you have this X, apply box box and you will get a Y that follows a normal distribution. But what is happening here? Basically, it is the application of this particular formula that is represented here. So you have the various values of X here, XI, that is X1, X2, so on and so forth. For each of these values, raise it to the power of lambda, reduce it by 1 and divide again by lambda. You do this whenever the lambda is not equal to 0. But if lambda turns out to be equal to 0, simply take a natural log. This is the whole formula behind box cox transformation. Now you might be wondering what is the value of lambda. So this part, we will typically leave it to the softwares to compute it for us. For example, if you are going to be using Python, you can use SkyPy package to compute lambda. Likewise, if you are going to be using the R programming language, there is a function called box cox, box cox in mass package in R that can determine the lambda value for you. Now let's look at the documentation page for the box cox function in SkyPy. All right, so this is the official SkyPy documentation. Under SkyPy, you have the stats module. Under stats, you have this function called box cox. You can use this. See here, box cox takes a particular argument which is the variable itself x variable right you pass in just the x you don't have to specify the values of lambda alpha will determine if you set the alpha it will find out the upper and lower bound confidences for lambda all right so no need to worry about these parameters and no need to worry about lambda also you can leave it as it is just pass the x to box cox that will determine what should be the optimal value of lambda that needs to be applied to that equation. Now, if you scroll down towards bottom of the page, you have the code implementation also. So here, we are just importing packages, stats and PLT from my plotlib. All right. Then initialize the figures. Here, we are creating x. So this particular function, it's creating the x here. It follows a log gamma distribution. All right. This is, this is a, another different distribution. We are creating x and we are plotting the QQ plot. We will cover this concept in more detail later on. All right. So we are using the, we are computing the QQ plot. Look at this. So this is the QQ plot that we are plotting over here. For a distribution to follow a normal distribution, for a variable to follow a normal distribution, it should lie perfectly on the red line we have here. But for this plot, you see that this points here is deviating away from the red line, which is an indication that this is not following or deviating away from a normal distribution. And in the next step, we are applying stats.boxcox on x. We are getting a new variable xt. This we are plotting using prop plot. All right. This is the plot that you have over here. Look at this. Compare the, the blue dots is following this kind of a shape. Right? It's slightly deviating away from the red line. But in the second plot, this is closer, more closer and lying on top of the red line itself, right? So this is successful in making the original X to confirm or follow more closely towards a normal, towards a normal distribution, all right? And make sure whenever you are doing this prop plot, this is called the QQ plot, quantile quantile plot, all right? Whenever you are doing this and you want to check for normal distribution, you need to make sure dist argument equals to stats dot norm. This will make sure that the x, whichever you are plotting here, is being compared to what would be expected for a normal distribution. Norm stands for normal distribution.